Hey everyone, uh, my name's Kelvin and uh, I'm going to show you really quickly here how to use mockups for Photoshop. Pretty much 99% of the mockups you'll use are going to work with smart objects, so that's going to be what most of this tutorial is about. But uh, the first thing you should do is after you get your mockups, they're probably going to be in a zip folder. Just go ahead and unzip that folder and then inside you'll usually find a, a bunch of Photoshop documents. In some cases they'll have preview images and that's because if you're on a Mac, it'll show you little thumbnails but on a Windows computer it won't it'll just give you the name so the preview image will kinda help you know which document to open up but uh, I think I'm gonna start with the first one here and I'll open that up in Photoshop and uh, we'll make sure we get the right version Okay, here's Photoshop 2018 and uh, if you go over to the layers panel you'll usually see one of the layers has this little page icon here and uh, this means it's a smart object layer and if you don't see the layers panel at all, you can turn that on by going to Window and then Layers. So if you don't see it, if it's just blank, just go to Window and then Layers. Now to open a smart object and uh, swap out the default image with your artwork, you have to double click this little page icon here. If you click over here, it won't work. And if you click the text, it won't work. You have to make sure you double click this little page here. And uh, what it will do is open up a new document tab. So here's the original document. And then you opened up that smart object and it opened up a new tab over here. And that's basically what a smart object is. It's like a Photoshop document inside of a Photoshop document. So here's the uh, default image. And if I turn that off, it goes away. If I turn it on, it comes back. And uh, that's how you can make sure you're turning off the right one. Uh, this mock-up comes with a paper texture. And you can just barely see it, but I'll turn that off too. Now if you want to place in your own artwork, you can usually just copy it and paste it in. But if that doesn't work, you can go to File and then place embedded and uh, this will bring up your um, you know sort of file browser and uh, I put my picture on my desktop here so I think it's this one here yep that's it and I'll do place uh, and that'll just place it into the document and then you can scale it up like normally um, depending on your computer there'll, there'll usually be a keystroke that'll let you scale it and constrain it but I'll scale to fit line it up like that and when you're happy with the placement just press enter and then close and save that smart object. So go up to the document tab here and click that little X. It'll ask if you want to save. Click save. And uh, it'll update the original document over here uh, with this new image and uh, kind of place your artwork in the scene there. Now for exporting this image, like if you want to put it on Etsy or something, I really recommend using the save for web dialog and you can find that under file, export, and then save for web. And uh, save for web is handy because it'll let you see the changes you make live in this little preview window and uh, for Etsy 3000 pixels is, is okay but you can get away with a little smaller image and uh, your picture will load a little bit faster and uh, you can also play with the compression like if you select JPEG over here it'll give you this option to lower the quality which sometimes that's kind of a misnomer actually you can lower the quality a lot and you won't actually see a difference in the image but it will lower the file size so if I raise this up to 100%, it's a 56, uh, looks like, nope, looks like 1.3 megabytes. And if I lower this down to 29%, it's just like 170 uh, kilobytes, which is super tiny. And you almost see no difference at all. Um, but if you're uploading it to Etsy, you don't have to mess with this at all. Just leave it at 100% and Etsy will automatically compress your images after you upload them. So you just go ahead and save this to your desktop and then upload that to Etsy. So hopefully that's a pretty clear explanation. If you have any questions or comments, just leave a comment on this video or send me an email. But uh, other than that, guys, thanks for your support and thanks for watching.